Hey, what's up? This is Laid Back Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and dedicated dad. Okay, so I'll come out swinging. Black lives matter. I owe my livelihood and passion to black culture, and some of you may not know how deeply rooted this is in dance music. I think we can all agree that this is a very intense and important time that we are living in. So this is a very serious vlog this week and I want you to keep full focus on what I'm bringing to you here today. So no contests or no new release announcements. Come with me on this journey. Why is it that DJs keep making statements like this? A tracks tweet that set it all off. Okay tweeting. All right, every dance artist say it with me. My music wouldn't exist without black influence. And Elijah tweeting some truth in here. Well, because it's true, obviously, but because it seems not everyone is aware of the black heritage in music. With everything going on, and I have thought about what I could contribute to shine a light on the struggles of people of color. And part of their struggle is that they don't get the credit where credit's due, nor recognition where it is owed. I myself am still learning on this subject every day. My narrative may not be complete and I may even get it wrong at times, but it is my plan and commitment to address this regularly from now on and be part of this conversation. I was born in the Philippines to a Filipino mom and a Dutch dad. Both cultures have influenced me as a person and as an artist, but when it comes to music specifically, the music that I'm known for, it's important to show you where some of my important influences stem from. To do so, we're gonna take a little trip down memory lane and I'll show you some of the origins of my sound. Now I know I need to educate myself better when it comes to understanding the historic background of dance music and I welcome any input. So make sure you leave something for us in the comments if you can add to this as well. So for now I will share with you what I have come to believe is accepted as general knowledge. We are taking it back to the early 1980s to Chicago in the United States. It was a time when disco as a genre was getting less popular and DJs began altering disco dance tracks, chopping them up, adding vocals and mixing them live. But before we go into that, let's briefly talk about where disco came from. This is important because I've always noticed that the beat patterns between disco and house music are the same. A four to the floor kick drum countered by a hi-hat on every upbeat and a clap on the two and four. Disco in the early 70s started as an underground movement born out of black gay and queer culture in New York City. These predominantly African American and Latino communities were the driving force behind what we now know and recognize as dance music culture. It is here where the ideal of peace, love, unity and respect within dance music came from. This is why, at a time when minorities in these communities were facing enormous and often violent discrimination, these clubs were a safe haven where they could congregate and share experiences. It is because of these safe havens that it lit a spark to a genre that we now know as dance music. The struggles that these communities faced fueled the music that we have today. This was first happening in New York City and its epicenter, the Paradise Garage with legendary resident DJ Larry Levon. It has been described that the vibe in there was like one big family. Later on, the New York sound would become known as Garage and one of the New York heroes of these times is Tony Humphreys. But wait, see what they did there? The Paradise Garage became Garage Music. So let's go into Chicago right now. In the early 80s, one of the key clubs was called The Warehouse, which is where the term house music came from. The Warehouse, house music. Here's where Frankie Knuckles experimented with R&B and disco and mixing it up with electronic music. This sound later became Chicago house or house music and it brought us originators like Marshall Jefferson, Steve Silk Hurley, Ralphie Rosario, Frankie Knuckles, and Jesse Saunders. I've met Frankie Knuckles a few times in my life. This photo was taken at an airport in 2013. It's absolutely incredible to meet absolute legends like that. But Frankie, alas, passed away though. 
may he rest in peace. And so when things started to develop and catch on, all these club DJs began exploring mixing and beat matching records. Gotta give a special shout out to the Hot Mix 5 in Chicago, where a DJ started experimenting with innovative ways to fully use their DJ equipment. DJs would try and one-up each other by surprising their fellow DJs with new combinations and mixing techniques. Real DJing in dance music was born. Detroit around this time the club experience developed into a whole different sound driven by the poverty of that specific area which was very industrial techno music was born as a variation on the Chicago house sound Detroit artists started to interlace sounds that can be traced back to African-American music styles with electric jazz mixed with Eurocentric synthesizer based music. All of the origins of techno can be pointed to Belleville High near Detroit, Michigan, where the four main originators attended school together. These were, and on the picture from left to right, Kevin Saunderson, Derek May, Juan Atkins, and Eddie Falks. Did you realize that all techno in the world today started with these black artists? Noteworthy in that day and age there was an interest in futuristic and fictional themes, something you can still see in a movement that is getting recognition now, which is Afrofuturism. Techno got its name when Juan Atkins famously used the phrase techno rebels from the novel Future Shock by Alvin Toffler to describe his style of music. For me coming up as a kid, it was Kevin Saunderson whom I first heard of through his hits he had as Inner City, you know, big fun. Fun fact, I still have this single as a 7-inch vinyl that I bought as a kid. And good life, of course. Let me take you to a place I know you wanna go. It's a good life. Hey, hey, yeah. In my time, I've met Kevin a couple of times and it's always been a huge honor. I've also met Derek May a couple of times and had the privilege to talk music and vibes with him as well. Other people in this realm who I personally think are originators too are Kenny Larkin, Stacy Pullen, and Carl Gregg. In my beginning years as a techno DJ, I would play a lot of tracks by them. I don't think I've ever met Stacy Pullen, but Kenny Larkin and Carl Gregg most certainly. I also have to bring it back to Lil Louis' French Kiss. <laughs> scored a big crossover hit in the Netherlands back in 1989. I must have been 12 or 13 then. At 15, starting as a producer, trying to learn, Gaston from Chocolate Puma pointed me towards DJ Pierre a lot. DJ Pierre is a legend for developing Acid House and putting out big tracks as Future 303. We've met a bunch of times and we are still in touch and a big shout out to Green Velvet and the influence he had with his Relief Records label and also Ray Barney's Dance Mania record label, which I just found out Jesse Saunders was a part of too. There's a lot of names for me personally that are affiliated to Dance Mania and Chicago. Paul Johnson, Jamie Gerald, Traxman, Boo Williams, DJ Dion, the legend, Farley Jack Master Funk. I am absolutely forgetting some names here, but that type of ghetto Chicago house sound has had a big influence on me as well. And it's wild how this crossover from the streets of Chicago to where I was in Europe in the 90s. Also starting out, for me personally, I can't leave out MK's influence in the mid 90s. Oh man, Kerry Chandler, Derek Carter, all these names. All of this takes me back to the beginning of my career. And in terms of DJ skills, I have to give a shout out to one of my main influences in DJing. They called him the wizard. And they called him that because of his mixing. I'm talking about Jeff Mills. And I only caught on Wikipedia just now that he used to be a part of the Detroit techno collective underground resistance with their biggest hit, Knights of the Jaguar. This he made with fellow techno producers Mad Mike Banks and Robert Hood. I can't even begin to explain how legendary this record still is. If you don't know it, look it up. 
Okay, so let's talk about real electro for a moment. Please note that I'm not talking about electro house here. Electro got introduced to me in the 80s. I must have been younger than 10 years old by a big brother of my friend and he introduced me to Africa Bambata. Africa Bambata was one of the key artists who tied the dance scene with hip hop, which at the time was a 100% black culture. When I heard electro for the first time, I didn't understand how this could sound so electronic, yet so soulful at the same time. Real Electro came up in the 1980s as well in New York and this influenced the development of hip hop culture. I reminisce for a spell or shall I say think back 22 years ago to keep it on track. Growing up as a teenager in my generation, we adored the black culture. In Europe, growing up in the Netherlands in the 80s and the 90s, we didn't have many people of color around in the village. We soon started to emulate the style of the rappers we saw on MTV, oblivious to the culture and the history, but fully recognizing the coolness of the sounds and the styles. I remember quite a few attempts of mine wanting to be like them but alas I was too Asian to really fit in. And so hip-hop and R&B in the 90s shaped my sound as well. Mind you I started to take in these sounds and not recognizing yet this was part of what I was doing. What I think is important is that when we emulate the style and sounds of black culture that we recognize the ones who built it. As this often gets forgotten obviously I need to give a shout out to Run DMC, Public Enemy, Eric B and Rakim, KRS-One and NWA as well. Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, there's so many names. Later, around the mid to late 90s, it was Timbaland's revolutionary beats followed by the Neptunes and N.E.R.D. that gave me my sound as a producer. Mixed with the house and techno people I just named, I've always tried to incorporate that feel, the chunkiness of the beats and the catchiness of that sound into my style of dance music. <laughs> When it comes to Dutch dance music, black heritage can be traced back to Suriname and the Antilles, which are all former colonies from the Netherlands where the Dutch owned plantations and these were populated by enslaved Africans who worked the fields. Because of these historic connections, there's a lot of people from Suriname and the Caribbean in the Netherlands, with the majority of these people being of black descent. Famously, DJ Morche introduced the bubbling sound that is the basis of what came to be known later as Dutch house music. Artists like Chucky, Shermanology, Afrojack, Sonnery James and Ryan Marciano all have these Surinamese Caribbean roots. I'd like to give a shout out to fellow DJ and vlogger DJ TLM as well. And so Mumbatone's origins came from a track that Chucky made with Silvio Icomo. That track was called Mumba and it was Afrojack's remix that got slowed down that ignited this genre. Special shout out to Dave Nada here. And so in a lot of Dutch house beats and Dutch house, we can find the South American beats thanks to this influence ultimately tracing back to Africa. And so I want to honor this heritage and I want you to see how it's so important to acknowledge black culture and influences, especially when these find roots in suffering by the same black people due to racism, discrimination, slavery, and so forth. This right here is my way to show gratitude and to support. And to all those fighting for equal rights for all and justice for black people, I can never feel your pain or know exactly what you go through and I'm sorry about that. But please know that I see it, I hear it, and I acknowledge it, and I stand with you. And while we keep pushing for the change, while we enjoy peace, love, unity, and mutual respect while dancing to the same beat, let's reflect and realize that black lives matter. To be continued. I hope that this is a starting point for all of us. It is for me. And there's a way for you to support the Black Lives Matter movement wherever you are. Make sure to check blacklivesmatter.com and also for my viewers in the Netherlands, check the link 
down below. And if you didn't hit that like button already, make sure you do now. I have so many vlogs coming up that I want to make. We'll do more late night looks. I want to listen to demos again. I want to make more tutorials. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now to not miss out. Thank you so much for tuning in for this. Until the next one, L's up, race safely and salute.